You know, you all know this, but apparently a lot of people don't. Don't ever miss one minute around here at Glory Bound. Don't even miss one note of one song, because if you do, you, 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 you might miss this. God, glory be to God. 
Well, that uh, represents one end of the musical spectrum. Let's go right over to another so. end of the musical sure. spectrum, similar but different, certainly in a different language. <laughs> we'll do this one in Tennessean. <laughs> Here we go. It's been a long time since we've played this. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
God arise in every area. I'm telling you, you can feel that heaven wants to bring something into us today. And we want to let him do that, right? We're going to receive our offering. If you need a cash giving envelope, if you'll raise your hand, the ushers will bring that to you. And so will Mary. And if you need it for your uh, credit card giving, if you're watching by the internet, go ahead and push donate. If you're watching by Facebook, welcome. Go to our website, push donate. Let's, be in, in, let's get hold of this together. You know, it's interesting because in the giving, one of the largest givers that we have doesn't even go to church here. They watch it online, so that's a wonderful thing. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for every giver. Most importantly, we thank you for you. And we thank you for you giving us seed that we can sow. Father, I thank you for the multiplication factor in the spirit, the multipli multiplication in the natural, in the holy name of Jesus. I thank you for blessing, blessing, blessing it in Jesus' name. And if you're ready as a worship to God, there's some black buckets on the side. You can bring them up, and you guys push them in. You shouldn't grab your bulletin and read it, but... Um... One of the things I want to make mention of, if I don't forget later, is we do have your financial statements ready for you. Next week, I'll take a little bit of time and kind of go over the finances a little bit. But uh, if you need that financial statement, your donations for 2017, um, see Mary, who has her lovely hand raised. See Mary af after church, okay? After church. Everybody say, after. After. After church. Hallelujah. You're not going to be working on your taxes during church, so. That's right. You need to be praying about your taxes during church. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Something happens in the realm of God's presence when you start talking about the blood of Jesus. I mean, he, uh, I was talking to Jeannie earlier, and we kind of established the doctrinal fact that he is everywhere all the time forever. And he doesn't limit his presence. Sometimes our discernment, our appreciation, our... Uh, our, our, our awareness of his presence seems to vary from time to time. But his presence never never varies. He's, he's uh, omnipresent. All you good denominational people learned that a long time ago. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time in full force. Having said that, whenever we start mentioning the blood of Jesus Christ, it seems like the Holy Spirit does something to actually punctuate that awareness a little bit. He's a little bit easier to feel, a little bit easier to discern, a little bit easier to pick up on. Oh, the blood that Jesus shed for Way back on Calvary, it's the blood gives me strength from day.
beyond this lifetime, beyond this darkness, there's light. His cross is shining, so people open your eyes. Beyond this lifetime, beyond this darkness, there's light. His cross is so people open your eyes cross stands above it all burning bright in this light the cross towers over it all one hope one deliverer the same thing 
at the same time. Well, there's value in that too. So sometimes we just kind of spontaneously worship and we get in the presence of God. But sometimes as the body of Christ, we use music to do a declaration of unity so as to establish things in the earth so as to establish things in our hearts. I like doing both. I especially like saying things in unity like the thing we're about to say together. Christ has overcome. Well, let's do that together. Everybody say
touch every bit, every part of your life this morning. Let him make a difference. Let him make a difference in your outlook. Let him make a difference in your body. Let him make a difference in your family. Let him make a difference in your finances. Let him make a difference in the city that we live in, in the state we inhabit. Let him make a difference in this nation of ours that we love. And because God is not an American, let him make a difference in the whole world. the United States of America like he does is fully well prepared to bless everybody just the same in every nation on the earth. His principles are true everywhere. The gospel is the gospel no matter where you go. The gospel is the gospel for rich and for poor, for white, black, yellow, purple, and green. The gospel is the gospel for men and women, just the same. The gospel is the gospel. And that's what we're about. The cross stands above it all, burning bright in this life. The cross towers over it all. One home, one deliverer, Savior reigning high above it all. Yeah, above it all. He's above it all. The cross stands above it all. soaring right now. This is the time for that to happen. Do you all have any idea how much he loves you and how much he wants you to see you do that? We need to really take the time this morning and do that because right now those eagles, they're waiting right now for you to get on them. There's a space every beating heart. There's a longing that reaches past the stars. There's an answer to every question mark. There's a name. There's a hope flowing through these veins. There's a voice 
Love has a name. Love has a name. Jesus. Love has a name. Love has a name. Jesus. There's a joy that triumphs over.
rest of us can have a seat, but let's join together in prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, your presence, so wonderful, Father, such awareness of you today. And Father, I thank you that as the word goes forth, 
it will accomplish everything that you want it to do. Father, you are the living word, and as we speak forth the living word, it will change us from one degree of your manifest presence to another. And we submit ourselves right now to you, Holy Spirit, to have your way with us, to speak the things that you want to speak inside our heart. Let us receive that from you in the holy name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. You know, today we're going to talk about a subject that is my favorite, favorite, favorite and it's the blood of Jesus. But we're going to present it in a way that maybe you haven't thought about it before, and it really will change your life. It's life-changing. Whenever we speak the words that God wants to speak, they really are life-changing. So keep yourself real open to that. Um, As we get going, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first video. Go ahead and run the first video, please. The The high priest once a year would go into the Holy of Holies, once a year, not without blood, which he offered for the people's sins committed in ignorance. It would go beyond the veil. And that veil was a place that separated people from God. And only the high priest would go in there. And he would offer blood for the people's sins committed in ignorance. His and the people's committed in ignorance. But when he came out of that place, he still had condemnation. Because the way into the Holy of Holies in heaven wasn't there yet. That was only symbolic for this. But when Jesus died... He entered into the Holy of Holies, not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with the holy spotless blood of Jesus Christ, the lamb that was slain, one that never sinned before. And he laid blood on the mercy seat in heaven, which constantly cries out mercy for you. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, but Satan, guilty. Guilty, condemned, guilty, ashamed, ashamed and guilty, which makes you keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and hating it. Looking in the mirror and saying, ah, I can't believe this. Then he wants you to read Romans 7 and think it's normal. It's not normal. Romans 7 is somebody that's trying to do it in their own strength but doesn't understand the cross. So Jesus says it's finished. That veil that separated man from God tore from the top to the bottom. And all of a sudden, because God wanted relationship with his kids. He didn't want a high priest here trying to represent him. He wanted a relationship with his kids. And he knew by sending Jesus to do what he did, you could be right with God. You could have right standing with God. So Jesus goes into the depths of the earth, says that he descended. Let captivity captive. My Bible says that he went into the depths and he paid for the sin of mankind. But on the third day, nobody, nobody died perfect and holy. Nobody was holy yet became sin. Nobody. (laughs) What kind of king would die for you? What kind of king would die for you so that you could live? What kind of king would leave heaven to come here to die for you so that you could live? Come on, man. It's like way better than an Easter story. So Jesus pays for the sin of mankind. The third day, the great Holy Ghost. He comes down into the depths. Oh, I'd love to see what that looked like. Man, that would be awesome darkness, the devil, all of a sudden, guaranteed, that's a movie. (laughs) The Holy Ghost with some keys in his hand, says, come on, you did it, let's get out of here. Keys to hell, death, and the grave, he hands to the Son, let's go. Amen, amen, I love that. And I uh, put some things that you'll have on the screen or on your notes. It says, the truth about the blood. CSI had an episode about a guy who painted over blood, and yet it was still visible with light. Clorox bleach can remove blood stains from the naked eye, but forensic experts use a chemical in the light to show that it is still present. If the blood-stained clothing is washed over 10 times, the blood can still be revealed. It's the blood of Jesus that washed you. It was the sin nature washed by the blood so that even if you commit sins, you can still be whole and brand new through repentance in the blood. We know anything washed with natural blood turns red. 
but the saints' robes are white. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. The spiritual work of the blood makes us new. It's a spiritual DNA. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit, with the blood that is eternal. Now, what you have to know is the blood that they would bring for sacrifices, the blood of spotless lambs, bulls, and goats, that was natural blood. And that blood would dry up after it was used, and it would no longer be any good. But there's something about the blood of Jesus. We've seen the video where Dr. Wyatt and at Dr. Van Covering, they take the blood of Jesus that they found, they take the blood to a lab, and when they examined that blood, they found that that blood was different than any blood they had ever seen. That that blood, though thousands of years old, was still alive. Still alive. Because it's the blood of Jesus. And the eternal sacrifice is so important that we understand, lest that we begin to be condemned in any way, lest we begin to try to work it out. Well, wait a minute. The Bible says work out your own salvation. Yeah, it does. With fear and trembling and self-distrust, knowing all the while that it is God who is at work within you. Amen. I like to finish scriptures. That way you don't get mixed up with them. In Genesis, I need you to understand something. Earth is temporal. Heaven is forever. Okay? In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17, he said to the man, You listened to your wife and ate the fruit from the tree. Although I commanded you, you must never eat of the fruit. The ground is cursed because of you. Through hard work, you will eat food that comes from it every day of your life. You will grow thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat wild plants. Now, God told man, here's the curse you're under. Because you have eaten of the tree of knowledge, trying to do it on your own of good and evil instead of the tree of life, what's going to happen is you're going to have to work hard just to provide a meal for yourself. And yet, how often we're still under that same curse, trying to just, if I could just make a living, if I could just have a place to live, just have some food. That's part of the curse. God never wanted that, but he said, the ground is cursed because you disobeyed me. And then he says this when Cain kills his brother in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 9. The Lord asked Cain, where's your brother Abel? I don't know, he answered. Am I supposed to take care of my brother? And the Lord asked, what have you done? Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground, from the earth. So now you are cursed from the ground, which has received the blood of your brother whom you killed. And when you farm the ground, it will no longer yield its best for you. You'll be a fugitive, a wanderer on the earth. And so there was a curse that came because the earth, the temporal, received the blood crying out for vengeance. And because the blood was received in the ground, the ground became cursed and would no longer produce its best. And we know something that Jesus did when he came. He took care of everything, didn't he? And this is some of what his blood did. In Mark chapter 15 and verse 17, it says, And they dressed him in purple and twisted some thorns into a crown and placed it on his head. Now, the thorns were that which was a curse to man, and it was placed on the head of Jesus where the blood took care of that. Last week, we got our crown or saw that we have a crown, quite different, but Jesus took the crown that we deserved to redeem the earth. And it says that in Luke chapter 22 and verse 44, and being in agony of mind, he prayed all the more earnestly and intently, and his sweat became like great clots of blood dropping down upon the ground. On the cross, when they wanted to see if he is dead, the soldier stabs him in the side. And what came out was water and blood on this earth. It wasn't regular blood. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus is different. It's not the natural blood like that flows through us. Holy blood. And it says that, well, the ground cried out and the blood of Abel cried out for judgment. What does the blood of Jesus cry out for? For mercy. And the Bible tells us that mercy triumphs over judgment. And there was a judgment on the earth, but the blood of Jesus, the eternal heaven realm blood of Jesus, cries out for mercy that triumphs over any judgment that is in our lives in any way, shape, or form. His blood is more powerful than anything. In Romans chapter 5, 
and verse 9, it says there's much more to say of his unfailing love. For through the blood of Jesus. Now, did you read this correctly? Through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration. You are righteous in my sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. Wait, through the blood we heard something. Through the blood we heard we're righteous. That blood is still speaking. The blood of Abel, it doesn't speak anymore because once it dried up, it was gone. It was dead. But the living, eternal blood is still crying out and saying, mercy. They're righteous. They're holy before me. It speaks. And now you're going to understand the scripture. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, it says, speaking of Satan, they defeated him through the blood of the lamb and the bold word of their witness. They weren't in love with themselves. They were willing to die for Christ. The bold word of their witness, with their, the confession of their mouth, what were they confessing? The blood of Jesus that is overcome. And how did you get born again? The Bible says if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be healed, you will be redeemed, you will be out of poverty, you will go to heaven, you will be set free, you will be saved. Through the word of your mouth and the believing of your heart. Because we believe that Jesus died, and we believe that he resurrected. And we believe that through the blood of Jesus, we are born again. We believe that he is called the Spirit, Holy Spirit, Spirit of Reconciliation, the Spirit that carries the blood, the Spirit that gets us born again. See, before they did a natural thing, a natural thing, blood in a place that they had made that was a foreshadowing of what's in heaven, a holy of holies that's here in the natural earth, but the true holy of holies that's in heaven. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, God was pleased to bring everything on earth and in heaven back to himself through Christ. He did this by making peace through Christ's blood sacrifice on the cross. See, we look at somebody and we say, oh, do you know how they're acting? Do you know what they did last night? Guess what I heard? And we judge the action of a person. But just like blood can be seen no matter how much it is covered over, that's the way it is in the spirit. No matter what somebody is doing or acting like, the blood is still present. And the blood is why they have reconciliation between them and God, not by their actions. Their actions didn't get them born again, and their actions aren't going to get them cursed. I'm telling you this because many times we're judging the blood when we think we're just calling out somebody's sin. But the blood needs to be seen. And we need to know that when Jesus died, so did we. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to anything that came with sin. Because I died with Jesus. Romans 6 and verse 3. Have you forgotten that all of us were immersed into union with Jesus, the anointed one? We were immersed into union with his death. Now, what did he die to? Sin. Sickness. Old nature, everything that was in darkness, we were immersed into union in his death. Verse 4, sharing in his death by our baptism means that we were co-buried and entombed with him. So that the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him. We've been co-resurrected with him so that we could be empowered to walk in the freshness of new life. We're co-buried, entombed, and we're co-resurrected. When he rose from the dead in the realm of the spirit, so did we. I'm no longer dead. I'm alive. I'm no longer in sin. I'm in righteousness. I'm no longer in judgment. I'm in mercy because I've been co with him. I've been entombed with him co-buried with him, co-resurrected. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. This is going to get better and better. We're kind of on a... Yet, look at you now. Everything is new. 
Although you once distant and far away from God, now you've been brought delightfully close to him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You've actually been united to Christ. Our reconciling peace is Jesus. He has made Jew and non-Jew one in Christ by dying as our sacrifice. He broke down every wall of prejudice that separated us and has now made us equal through our union with Christ. Ethnic hatred has been dissolved by the crucifixion of his precious body on the cross. The legal code that stood condemning every one of us has now been repealed by his command. His triune essence has made peace between us by starting over, forming a new race of humanity, Jew and non-Jew, fused together. Oh, we think there's such a separation. But God said, I have brought every atom, I have brought everything back in order through the peace, and that peace is the blood of Jesus. Now, you have to understand something. The Abel's blood cried out from the ground. Jesus' blood cries out through you and me. Amen. We are the blood-bought children, and when you hear a word that is from God, it's the blood speaking. And I'll tell you something about the blood speaking. It is absolutely the stamp the seal of total authority. If God has given you a word, his blood has guaranteed it. And his blood will never fail. His blood is always living. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, it says, For in Christ you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as you were baptized into Christ, into spiritual union and communion with Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, have put on and clothed yourself with Christ. You're wearing him. And what is his robe? Blood soaked. And you're wearing him. That's our wardrobe. It's eternal and not temporal. The Bible tells us, if you sin, there is no more a sacrifice left for you. And that used to be so condemning because I know somebody that after they received Jesus sinned. And then I knew, oh, there's no more sacrifice for you. But that's not what that's saying. Jesus was the one only true eternal sacrifice. So we don't have to look for another. Do you know after Jesus died and resurrected, they were still doing sacrifices in the temple. And they were saying, there's no sacrifice for you anymore. It's already done. It's already been done through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. How much more surely shall the blood of Christ, wait a minute, by virtue of his eternal spirit, his own ex pre-existing divine personality has offered himself. As an unblemished sacrifice to God, purify your conscience from dead works and lifeless observance to serve the ever-living God. Amen. See, before, the blood would be on the animal. They would sacrifice it, and then they would sprinkle it on the people, on the books. It cleaned the outside, but it never did anything for man's inner person, the real man. Because after that, he'd sin again. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us from the inside out. We become brand new in him. And sin isn't our nature. It might be sometimes something that we do, but it is not our nature. And the blood of Jesus can still be seen through it. In Hebrews 9 and verse 14 in the Passion, it says, Yet how much more will the sacred blood of the Messiah thoroughly cleanse our conscience? For by the power of the eternal spirit, he's offered himself to God as the perfect sacrifice that now frees us from our dead works to worship and serve the living God. It's an eternal sacrifice. He doesn't have to and we don't have to go year after year and have a sacrifice because it's done. And it's eternal. In Hebrews chapter 9 he says in verse 22, Moses said to the people, this is the blood of the covenant God has established with you. Practically everything will hinge on a death. That's why blood is the evidence of death is used much in our tradition, especially regarding the forgiveness of sin. It says it this way in the Passion. 
Actually, nearly everything under the law was purified with blood since forgiveness can only come through the outpouring of blood. Not a temporal forgiveness, not a temporal washing, but an eternal. And we're going to see the difference between the blood shed here and the blood that was brought to the Holy of Holies in heaven. Hebrews 13 and verse 20, he says, Now may the God of peace, who is the author and giver of peace, who brought you again from among the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that seals and ratifies the everlasting agreement, covenant, and testament. In the Passion, it says it this way. Now, may God who brought us peace by raising from the dead our Lord Jesus so that he would be the great shepherd of the sheep of his flock by the power of the blood of the eternal covenant. This is not like a natural covenant. This is not a covenant that can be broken because it wasn't made between us and God. It was made between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and given to us as the recipients. When Jesus died, because he was the Lamb of God, his blood needed to be poured out on the mercy seat. But it wasn't going to be. We saw his blood on the earth, but now he needed to have his blood taken into heaven and poured upon the mercy seat to be that eternal sacrifice for us. As he has resurrected from the dead, Mary happens to see him. Rabboni, Rabboni. And she goes running to him and he says, do not. Look at this. Let's do it in John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said to her, do not cleave to me. Do not hold me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go tell the brethren that I have ascended to the Father and your Father and my God and your God. Let me give it to you in the Passion and then I'm going to explain this to you. Jesus cautioned her, Mary, don't hold on to me now, for I haven't yet ascended to God, my Father. And he's not only my Father and God, but now he's your Father and God. Now go tell my brothers and tell them what I've told you, that I'm ascending to the Father and your Father and my God and your God. Now, Jesus couldn't let her touch him because he still had the blood that he had shed that he had to take and pour on the mercy seat for every sin, every nature of sin, for all humanity, his blood was poured out so that man could approach God, God could approach man. It was called the eternal sacrifice. It was done once for all. Remember what, how it used to be that we've read about how they would all bring the lamb for their family. The Saguda lamb, the Curtis lamb, the Moore lamb, the Joneses lamb. They would bring their lamb and they would kill that lamb and it would be for the whole family that had that name. But Jesus, he's called the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so God's lamb, Jesus was sacrificed, and it's accounted to every one of our accounts because we're one with him. It says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12, before I go there, listen to me. The natural blood that was given on the earth with these wonderful animals was temporary. But Jesus didn't take temporary blood into heaven. He took eternal blood. He was already in his glorified body. He was already glorified. He had already resurrected. He had already come through the tomb. He's already in this type of body, the, the one that is supernatural. And yet, he's taking blood into the holy of holies. Glorified blood. Blood that had never sinned and never will. And blood that would be permanent. Blood that was different than any man. It was the blood that comes from God. And he went and poured that on the holy of holies for you and me. So that sin could not have predominance in our life, nor the result of sin. Because we've got the blood. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. He went once for all into the holy of holies of heaven. Not by virtue of the blood of goats and calves by which to make reconciliation between God and man. But his own blood. Having found a secure and complete redemption 
an everlasting release for us. He went into the true holy of holies. And he poured his blood permanent forever for always for you and me. Never again do we have to call him down to do some more because it's all been done permanent. Permanently, I'm righteous. Permanently, I'm under the mercy of God. Permanently, I will never have the wrath of God permanently. But what if I do this and what if I do that? Well, then you're stupid. <laughs> you didn't do good and therefore you got saved and you don't do bad, therefore you're out of it. It's the blood. I've been born by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Permanent. Romans 8 and verse 10. But for you welcome him in whom he dwells, even though you still experience the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it? That if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves in your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does, as surely as he did in Jesus, you're delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be alive, as alive as Christ. Don't you see? That we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent. There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. And the best thing we could do is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. The spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and me and quickens our mortal body. The Spirit of God, His very Spirit, is who carries the blood to us. He's called the Spirit of Reconciliation, you know. It's very important that we understand His part in this. And Jesus tells us this, and you're going to see how permanent His blood is. 1 John 1, 7. For really living and walking in the light as He Himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. Look at this. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, Cleanses, not cleanse, but cleanses, removes us from all sin and guilt and keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms of manifestations. But I painted over it. Ah, the light shone in. I can still see the blood. But, but I did this and I did that. I can still see the blood. It's always there. Because he's the spirit of reconciliation and because he's the Holy Spirit, that brings the message of the blood. You'll understand. Mark, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 31. This is why I warn you. For God will forgive people of every sin and blasphemy that they have committed except one. There is no forgiveness for the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Then he's going to go on to tell us some things. For if anyone speaks evil of me, the son of man, he can be forgiven. Anyone speaks contemptuously against the Holy Spirit, it will never be forgiven now or forever. So what is it that we speak out against the Holy Spirit? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. How much more worse, sterner, heavier punishment do you suppose he will ju be judged to deserve those who have spurned and thus trampled underfoot the Son of God who has considered the covenant of blood by which he has consecrated common and unhallowed, thus profaning and insulting and outraging the Holy Spirit who imparts grace and unmerited favor and the blessings of God. It's the Holy Spirit who imparts this grace from the blood. And what outrages the Holy Spirit is when we don't see and when we deny that the blood of Jesus is any more powerful than the blood of goats and bulls. That we deny that the same thing, his blood cried out for vengeance, so Jesus' blood cried out for mercy, so they had a little battle. No. We have to understand that this is eternal, holy blood of God that the Holy Spirit comes and imparts and gives to us. It tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. Do not spur the gifts and the utterance of the prophets. Do not disrespect prophetic revelation or despise inspired instruction 
or warnings. In the Passion Bible, he says, never restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. And don't be one who scorns prophecies. You understand that when someone is speaking the words of God, when you're speaking the words of God, the blood is speaking. The blood is speaking. You might speak Spanish and English, but you can speak blood too. And speaking blood is the most powerful thing that we can do. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not offend or vex or sadden him by whom you were sealed, marked, branded as God's own, secure for the day of redemption, the final deliverance through Christ from the evil consequences of sin in the passion. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you. In Jesus Christ, until you experience your full salvation, never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his influence in your life. Do you realize we're sealed with the Holy Spirit because he has sealed us with the blood of Jesus? And I'm not going to ever take that for granted. You didn't understand and I didn't understand when we got born again what it meant. We just thought, hey, man, I feel something and now I get to go to heaven. But it's far more than that. We have his very blood given to us as a gift so that I never have to be a failure at all in my life. I never have to receive sickness in my life. I never have to be humiliated because it's the blood of Jesus that I'm under. It's no need for another sacrifice, no need to call him down from heaven. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26, it said, For then he would often have to suffer over and over again since the foundation of the world. But as it is now, he has once for all, at the consummation, the closes of the ages, appeared to put away and abolish sin by the sacrifice of himself. Abolish means put away. It means to cancel. It means to not have it be effective anymore. It means to nullify. It means to be made void. His blood did this for us. Colossians 1.14. The son got us out of the pit we were in, got rid of the sins that we were doomed to keep repeating. I like it. Hebrews 13.20. And may God, who puts all things together, makes all things whole, who makes the lasting mark through the sacrifice of Jesus, the sacrifice of blood that sealed the eternal covenant, who led Jesus, our great shepherd, up and alive from the dead, now put you together. Provide you with everything you need to please him. Make us into what gives him the most pleasure by means of the sacrifice of Jesus the Messiah. All glory to Jesus forever and always. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's an eternal covenant. I get to receive an eternal covenant. I get to have the eternal blood in my life. The blood that in the spirit... Jesus poured on the mercy seat for me. Anytime there was a sin, anytime there's something that I can't get past, the blood has named it and taken care of it. And on the mercy seat is that we are righteous and true and holy and powerful and healed. When Jesus went and he began to tell everybody, you must eat my body, you must drink my blood, it was not the most popular message. It wasn't like when he was saying, blessed are the poor and blessed are this. They were saying, no, we're not going to do that. And in fact, Peter came and said, no, we'll not let you be taken away. And he had to rebuke Satan in him because they didn't want this to be truth. But Jesus came for this to be absolute truth. And he says in John 6 and verse 63, it's the spirit who gives life, the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatever, and there's no profit in it. The words and the truth that I've been speaking to you are spirit and life. You realize he's the spirit of reconciliation. When Jesus would speak, things would come back together. And Jesus said, I've been speaking blood, and the blood that I've been speaking is spirit and life to you. It goes on in John 6, 63 in the Passion. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. That which is the nature in the natural realm is of no help. But the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. But there are still some of you who won't believe. Now I want you to say this with your mouth. The words that Jesus spoke, words that Jesus spoke were, spirit were spirit and life. The words that I speak, that I speak are, spirit are spirit and life. 
Then Jesus went on to tell them in John 6, 53, Jesus didn't give an inch. Only in so far as you eat and drink the flesh and the blood, the flesh and the blood of the Son of Man, do you have life within you. The one who brings a hearty appetite to this eating and drinking has eternal life and will be fit and ready for the final day. My flesh is true food. My blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me and I into you. In the same way, that fully alive father sent me here and I live because of him. So the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. This bread is from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. Whoever eats this bread will live always. It was so important to Jesus that the last thing he did with his disciples on this earth was to have communion so that they would realize it's not natural bread that I need. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word. Jesus was the living word. I received this holy bread, him, and I become holy bread, him. And I received the very DNA of Jesus through the cup of blessing. And it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, when we drink the cup of blessing, remember he drank the cup of wrath and indignation, but when we drink the cup of blessing, aren't we taking into ourselves the blood, the very life of Christ? And isn't it the same with the loaf of bread we break and eat? Don't we take into ourselves the same body, the very life of Christ? He said, before you do it, I want you to judge yourself according to the eternal blood sacrifice. Judge yourself just the way Jesus does. His blood cries out. And we heard it say righteousness. And his blood cries out. And we heard it say mercy. So who are you? You're righteous. And you're people that are under mercy. People with the fullness of the actual DNA of God flowing through us so that we can do anything. Now, if you'd stand up, grape juice is in the children's cups. The sweet wine is in the clear cups. The regular wine is in the cups closest to me. There's gluten-free bread. There's bread and everything else. Come on both sides of the table and let's partake. But I want you to get hold of that you're not doing, not receiving a sacrifice that every now and then works. We're receiving an eternal sacrifice. Mary, did you want to say anything more as we're doing this? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus looked forward to this time so that he could explain to them, it's not your blood, it's my blood. It's not natural body, it's the supernatural body. Remember, Jesus came in his supernatural body to pour his supernatural blood in the Holy of Holies. And he then became the mercy seat. The mercy seat is no longer something on this earth. Jesus is the mercy seat. He's covered with the blood. And we are covered with the blood of Jesus. His blood strengthens us. His blood makes the, our enemies to be at peace with us. His blood gives us access to the Holy of Holies. His blood heals us. His blood redeems us. His blood keeps us from dead works. His blood is his very life. And the very life of Jesus on the inside of you. When it says his blood flows through you, then how much room does Satan have against the blood? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. Just like they rejoiced when the blood would hit them in the natural and they would know that their sins were forgiven, it was a great day of rejoicing. But something had to give their life. And it was an animal, but this time it was the Lord Jesus. And let the blood so touch your life that it's not just once a year and maybe you sin the next day and you have to wait 364 more days. His mercies are new every morning. And I want to tell you something. He's the bright morning star, so it's always morning with him. Amen. And his mercies are for us. Because that blood cries out, and that blood is on you so that you can speak 
spirit and life. And the Holy Spirit is not offended when we honor the very blood of Jesus. Jesus said, this is my body. This is my body. And when you partake of this, you are taking into yourselves the very life of Christ. Amen. Take and eat. He said, this is your new lot in life. It's my DNA. It's my promise from my blood that you will be a blessed people. And the Bible tells us, and we read it, it says, when you take this into yourself, Aren't you drinking the very life of Christ and taking it into yourself? Let his blood flow through every part of you spiritually, emotionally, physically. This is his gift. Take it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Mary? Amen. <clears throat> and, and this is the part I want to share. Um, I think Claudia painted a beautiful picture of not just the... It, in God's mind... There are two aspects of how he does business for our redemption. One was the legal side. The legal side was accomplished when the blood of Jesus fell to the earth and redeemed the earth from curse and man from a sin. And then there's what we call the vital side or the Holy Spirit side. That was accomplished when Jesus was raised from the dead and presented the, his spiritual blood to the Father, and then on Pentecost, when the church was born. Those two things were totally accomplished, so we have a complete and total salvation through the blood of Jesus. Now, my prophetic word to you all is this. Do not compromise. Do not compromise. Well, Mary, we, you know, we... We do all these good works in God's name. We do all this. We do that. You're, that does not, do not compromise. Knowing the truth now about what the blood of Jesus has done for you, both legally and spiritually, knowing that truth, do not compromise. Do not look for another avenue, another, if only I could get this information, if only I did this one thing, if only I followed this group of people. I'm telling you that the church that's going to be raised up in this hour will be a church without compromise. And to add one thing to the finished work of Jesus Christ in heaven's mind, that is a compromise. Because you are saying there's something more that I have to do. You'll have to decide. But the church that is triumphant and glorified is the church that has received the legal and the vital finished work of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord to you is, you are a triumphant church without spot or blemish. Do not compromise what you know about Jesus and his finished work and the power of the wonderful Holy Spirit and the wonderful love of the Father. Do not compromise. Amen? Amen. And, and I talk to me about that. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I have to shift the little gear for just a minute. Oh, yes, Amy, thank you. Um, just stay right there. Um, Friday night when, when I was at the store, I was sitting in the car for a moment. I saw a lady, and she had some children, and uh, her husband, I assume, and they were walking into the store, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, doesn't that make you think of Amy? And I said, it exactly makes me think of Amy. Amy, I saw something in the future. It was as if I was there, 
and I saw you. And you were walking, holding maybe a child, I'm going to say about six months old in your arms. And you had your son. And you were leaning up against this wonderful man who was a protector, who was a godly man, who loved you. And I could tell just by observing what a blessing this was to you in your life. So my word to you from the Lord is keep your heart wide open and hold on and hold out for the very, very, very best. Because you were happy, extremely happy. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Julianne, when I was sitting close to you, I felt like you really needed a touch today. I felt like you needed a touch in your physical body, and so I'm speaking that healing over you right now in the name of Jesus, and I felt like you needed a touch in your heart because it's been way too heavy uh, because of circumstances. It's not because you want to be heavy-hearted. It's just that things have happened. So we're all in agreement today for a change in Jesus' name that you receive just as you heard the message, you receive that knowledge, that information that God is with you and for you and that you are strengthened and made whole through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so is your family in Jesus' name. So I speak favor over you. I feel like you need some favor with work and I'm speaking that favor today in the name of Jesus. It must be this way. Julianne, you know you know how to speak in this situation. You know exactly how to speak. I've heard what you've said before, and I know you know. So I'm just, we're just building you up in the spirit today so that you will walk forward and feel out from underneath the oppression that has tried to make you feel low because God says there is a lifting up. Okay, in Jesus' name, amen. This couple right here, it was so nice to have you be in church today. As soon as I made your acquaintance, um, I felt something from the Holy Ghost over you immediately, just immediately. I felt, um, I felt healing, first of all, that uh, there was physical healing for you today in the name of Jesus. And I just speak that absolute quickening of the Spirit of God over you, especially you. Healing virtue touches and quickens you in Jesus' name. And I also felt like God wanted us to speak a blessing over your family in Jesus' name. So I'm speaking that to you, that your words and your prayers for your children and your children's children have not been in vain, but that they will accomplish everything you've sent it to do. There's something about you guys. Uh, there's something about you that makes me feel like you have a deep knowledge of the things of God and that you love him and that you've served him. And so I just want to speak a blessing over you that your service would continue in Jesus' name and that um, this wasn't, um, that you have, you have other things to do. And so I'm speaking that over you today. In Jesus' name, just the refreshment that comes from the presence of God. You really need to know that your work has not been in vain. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a job, job situation. I'm speaking breakthrough over you today in the name of Jesus that you absolutely need it. A little bit of your, uh, do not identify with your natural job because it isn't who you are. Who you are is a great and mighty woman of God, okay? Who you are is someone who has the word of God in season and out of season and can bring encouragement to wherever you go. Do not look behind you. You look straight ahead and move forward. There's nothing for you back there, okay? Not one thing for you in the past. It's not there. God holds you up, and you walk forward in his loving care, okay? Hallelujah. Blessings for your job in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Let's see.
Oh, how, oh. oh. I feel dizzy now. <laughs> Thank you. Was it the wine you take? <laughs> wow. I sure can't hold my liquor, I guess, huh? <laughs> well, just that little bit, honest. <laughs> I used to think that, but I guess I'm really, really wrong. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you stand up just for a minute? What's your name? Rebecca. Rebecca. Have we seen you before? Uh, I thought perhaps, but I wasn't sure. But I know we've seen him before. Why? Come on over here a minute. Tim, why, Tim, why don't you come over? I like that sound. Keep that coming. Makes me feel happy. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, we're speaking a new beginning here in the name of Jesus, okay? That the old things have passed away and the fresh and the new comes. And not only is God going to, it's going to even be a, you know, how God says this is a new beginning, and we know that he's referring to some heart things, some spiritual things. But it's also going to be a new beginning in the natural, too, because God is going to move you. And so I'm speaking over that for you in the name of Jesus, a brand new opportunity and a brand new start in Jesus' name. Do you have a family? Yes. How many? Two. Two. I see that there's some more. So I bless that in the name of Jesus. And I call that for, I know, don't be mad. This will be good in Jesus' name. I'm sorry. I must tell the truth. It's going to be fine. But it's going to be easy easy and my direction is really more pulled towards you at this time in your life because I felt like you've been sad and that you need to know how precious you are and how beautiful you are and how much God loves you you are a very beautiful and talented woman and uh, God is so pleased with you Rebecca he really is but there's just been this sadness. I cancel any wrong words spoken against you in the name of Jesus, any spirit of betrayal that's tried to come against you in Jesus' name. And I speak real healing to your heart. Rebecca, you are a very organized lady. I'm going to bring you to my house. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably put some things in order for me. I'd be so grateful. And that's part of her. She has a very powerful administrative gift. You could probably benefit from that administrative gift, Thank even you. in your work, okay? Yeah. You could benefit from the information that she has and the administrative gift she is. Also, you have a teaching gift. And I bless you in that teaching gift in the name of Jesus. You be bold, Rebecca, and step out in that good teaching gift that you have. Don't let anybody or anything limit you. I speak a healing over you from your your family <sighs> understand God has you 2018 will not be what 2017 had been okay amen thank you Jesus do you guys have anything mr. Timo yeah um, just real quick um, I again I heard peace for you guys um, and I I saw um, um, peace just kind of go through your household, and it just kind of shot through it real quick. I didn't feel like there had to be a lot of work done, but there had to be some, and it just shot through your house, and um, it's done. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be good in the name of Jesus. Do you know our our friend Timo here? He's gonna be going to Japan, right? Yeah. In March. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. I, God is sending him just at the right time. Do you know that so much of uh, the harvest is going to be focused in, in that part of the world, in, in Asia? And he'll yeah. be right there. Yeah. He'll be right there. No telling what you'll do. Yeah. We might read about you in the paper. <laughs> Amen. Be good stuff. Yeah. It, uh, no doubt. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, come on up. Please. Now, here's the deal. Shauna, you know who Shauna is? Yep. 
a few days ago or whenever, um, the doctors said bad things. They, they kind of can't help themselves, okay? They just, they take these tests and they think it tells them the final word in, in situations and in people's lives. But it doesn't. Because we believe, especially after what we heard today, in the power of the blood of Jesus. And we know Shauna is uh, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and, and with the blood of Jesus. So we're going to cancel those words in Jesus' name. And we believe that Shauna will live Amen. and not die. Amen. That she has life and life more abundantly in Jesus' name. So we're speaking that, and we break the power of old words, and we break off fear in the name of Jesus Christ, and we cancel every wrong word spoken about her that she heard in Jesus' name, and we thank you, and we proclaim healing virtue touches her physical body and eliminates every evil cell in Jesus' name that she is totally and completely in divine health in Jesus' name. We don't believe that there's any other alternative for this except healed in Jesus' righteous name. Healed in Jesus' righteous name. So are you in agreement? Yes. Amen. So here is the prayer cloth that she's going to take to Shauna. So after church, would you be so kind? as to lay your hands on this and to speak life in Jesus' name. Okay. Yes, come, please. On the bulletin this morning, we have a quote from Abraham Lincoln. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Amen. So we create that future for Shana, a future where she lives abundant life, life worth living, and, and a graceful and fun-filled life in Jesus' name. Amen. During the service, I was praying for Shauna because we talked before the service. I saw a bright, bright light, Holy Spirit, glory light, go into her abdomen and just clean up everything, Amen. everything. So we come against that vomiting that she's having every day. We won't allow that. We just won't allow that because when our Father heals through his son Jesus Christ in the blood, it is permanent. Yes. The deal is sealed. So you go tell Shauna, the deal is sealed. It's permanent. That's the words of God. Amen. 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 Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We'll pray for this and, and lay our hands, and then you take it to her. We love you. Is there, is there announcements? Uh, uh, Gary has an announcement? Oh, sure. Come on, Gary. Who? Yes, come and pray for her. We're, we're going to just lift up Colin's brother, Rocky, and we just speak um, wholeness and release and favor and breakthrough for him in Jesus' name that what has been troubling him gets dealt with by the Spirit of God today, never to disturb him again in Jesus' name. Amen. And pray for your friend. Um, I heard about a woman named Kylie. She has a two-year-old daughter. She had been sick and sick going to the doctors. They didn't find out. Now she has hantavirus and um, it is in the hospital. I don't know if she's unconscious, but we don't care because we declare Kylie healed and made whole. And Kylie, we say you will live and not die. And you will declare the glory of the Lord. You will raise your two-year-old daughter and see her graduate from high school and see her married and going to college and all the dreams that you have for her fulfilled. We declare life, life, and more life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have a message um, just for the single people. You married folks. All right. <laughs> Don't speak that. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, if you don't have a Valentine and you don't want to spend time home alone, I'd like to invite you to come join us 
for a Valentine's dinner. Um, I'm gonna, we want to keep the cost down. I want to respect everybody's budget. So this Wednesday night, Valentine's, if you're free, 6.30, join us at the Village Inn at the north end of San Mateo. I think that's an academy, is San Mateo an academy? Yes. Okay, it's 6.30. Um, if you know another single person, um, feel free to invite them. Okay, and let's just sup together as brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't matter if you're divorced, if you're widowed, it doesn't matter. If you're single and don't have anybody, come join us. A lot of us don't have anybody either, so don't feel ashamed. Okay, and if, if we get done early enough and you're not too full and inclined, maybe we'll go to a movie. So you're, you're all invited. What are you going to go see? I thought maybe we could tag along and... <clears throat> okay, fine. CDs and DVDs. Lupe just uh, reminded me to tell you that they're available from the uh, service today, especially if you've got a prophetic word. We'll give you one. Otherwise, we'll sell you a CD for two bucks and a DVD for four bucks. And, uh, yeah, by the teaching, it'd be good. Um, read your bulletin. Good stuff in there about upcoming events. Uh, Dr. Ron Charles is going to be with us the first weekend in March. He's a uh, Holy Ghost-filled archaeologist that knows tons of stuff. And, you know, when you know tons of stuff about archaeology and tons of stuff about um, Hebrew and Greek and tons of stuff about what the Bible says, it makes you fun to listen to. Because you can come up with revelation just by knowing facts. It's really amazing. And that's kind of what he does. He's going to be real fun. He's been here. Uh, it's been quite a while. It's about seven years or something since he's been here. Um, he regularly supports um, uh, missions and um, orphanages in Egypt and uh, ministers all through the Middle East and stuff like that. So uh, he'll be fun to, to be around. So be sure and be available that weekend. Um, our coffee shop continues to, to, to manifest. We're going to have some fun with that. We might be open next weekend, uh, hopefully, uh, weekend after that, if not. But uh, we're working on it, uh, just in case you're looking around wondering what all that junk is in there. Um, the, the thing I wanted to really talk about today, and, and, and uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about before? Because this will be kind of the closing thing. Um, we could use your help if, if possible. Um, we're going to give all of these chairs away, except uh, we're going to keep uh, enough to do the back room. But uh, the rest of these chairs we're going to give away, uh, they're going to be used by a church here locally, as well as a church that's starting up in Mexico. And so uh, it's a really good seed. Uh, frankly, we've been offered $15 a chair by two different sources for all these chairs. And we're in a position, because of your generosity, we're actually in a position to sow this instead of sell it. And uh, so it's going to be a very good seed for this church. Amen? Uh, good seed for you, good seed for me. Um, so uh, we'll expect some blessings off of this offering. But um, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to stack up all the chairs, and um, we're either going to – the ones with yellow dots on them are the ones that we're going to save. Um, we're going we're gonna to take those into the back room and put them against the green chalkboard. And, Mom, I'd like for you to supervise that, if you would, if you'd just kind of be in the back and supervise – um, them taking the yellow dot chairs and putting them against the green blackboard up there, up there in the, in the auditorium in stacks of 10 so we can count them. Uh, the other chairs that don't have yellow dots, as soon as some of the cars move out here, I'm going to move the truck around. And uh, if you can stay for about 20 or 30 minutes, we could use your help because we're going to stack those chairs in the truck and take them where they go. So uh, uh, if you can do that, we would really be grateful if you can stick around for about 20, 30 minutes maybe. Uh, might not even take that long if we have lots of help. But we're going to take, uh, uh, take those chairs, stack them up in the truck. So um, on that note, yes, sir. So does that mean next week we bring Matthew Phillips? No. Next week we'll have a surprise for you. Yeah, we got some new chairs, so that's good. New church chairs, the ultimate status symbol for the 21st century North American church. Hallelujah. 
Yes. So what we're going to do is, is, is uh, as, as we adjourn, we're going to have the healers up here uh, with the healing pool. If you're sick in your body, if you're injured, if you need a healing in any way, shape, or form, we will have healers up here to lay hands on you, and you shall recover. We'll also have the elders in attendance today uh, over here to pray with you about any and every need you might have that you need prayer of agreement for. Uh, just get together, join your faith with one of the elders and uh, pray it through. If, if, if uh, you've given your heart to Jesus today for the very first time, tell the elders, they'll pray with you. Uh, they'll give you a little bit of information about that. They'll get you filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues if that's what you want to do. Um, it's a gift for you. I would recommend it highly. Uh, and after that's done, that then we'll kind of tear into the chairs. So, uh, Oh, yeah. Mary, uh, it's, that's in the bulletin, I think. But Mary's got the uh, giving statements here. Um, if there's some sort of trouble or anything like that, uh, come see me or call me during the week. Uh, but, but you should have one there. It should agree with, with all the totals. I did find all the deposits and do everything. So all that part's done and everything. And uh, next week, I'll talk a little bit about the finances. I do want to thank every and each and every one of you givers that makes all this possible. Yes, ma'am. Do you guys see uh, the yellow stickers on the top and the back of your chairs? I don't see very many of them. Uh, it looked to me like they disappeared. Well, no, I'm just. That's why we're going to stack them in 10 in the back and make sure that the truck doesn't leave until we got 100. Okay, and the ones that have the new, newer material, for the most part, are the ones that go back. Okay. Yes. Well, we'll just go by that for now. Okay, get healed, get prayed for. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, yes. Everybody lay hands on this prayer cloth, and, and I just do so right now in Jesus' name, releasing healing anointing from the Holy Ghost. Lay hands on this prayer cloth. We'll send it along. Get healed, get prayed for, stack chairs up, go eat lunch. God bless you.
Set you as a seal upon my heart, as a seal upon my arm. Oh, there is love that is as strong as death, jealousy demanding as the grave. Set you as a seal upon my heart, as a seal upon my arm. Oh, there is love that is as strong as death, jealousy demanding as the grave, and many.